make sure to stick around because we are starting with Hugh and I'm not familiar with the game. Yet. Who we got? Who we got? Hugh and crusty ass Tims. Crusty. That I am. Yo, crusty ass Tims. Beautiful tag. Beautiful tag. He is definitely one of us. The man of not just culture but the culture. <laughs> All right, so. Let's give a little bit of perspective to Hugh because most people probably aren't too aware of starting with anything besides Squirtle. Yep, no. Nope. This man's a Charizard man! Yeah, he even like um, stuck with Charizard during the entirety of doubles also. He even, I didn't see Squirtle at all today. So, thanks to a couple of players from uh, the, the Dominican Republic, I'm aware that starting with Charizard has a bit of like... There's a game plan behind it. Let's say, for instance, Tell me, Hugh please. manages to lose his stock. Yes. What will happen is using Squirtle's good speed, be able to get into position against the opponent. While he's on iframes, swap over to Ivysaur. Ivysaur, as we've all come to know at this point of the game, has plenty of setup to go into a kill. He Definitely. gets his hit, goes into kill confirm, and either snatches himself a free kill, gets himself stage control, or he whips. And then he'll just switch right back to Charizard and go into playing Charizard, who has a very good kit in his own right. Yep, definitely. Um, a lot of buzz happens to this character with the normals, especially the aerials. Very good stuff. And his throws. Like, look at the spacing from uh, from the bears that he's trying to put out. He doesn't want to interact. He yeah. watches in a character that wants to interact. Don't give him the time of day. Because if you start swinging on Game & Watch Shield, oh, it's upbeat time. Mm -hmm. And the smashes also go ham on your shield. Uh, tr be wary when you try to punish it. Like, Charizard's a big body. He can't really afford to get reversaled on so easily because he's just going to take lots of damage. And Game & Watch is not a character that struggles to get this kill. Definitely not. Especially now at this percent. But right now, he's at up throw percent. Game & Watch kind of light, though, so you know he's going to blow up. It's kind of a bad percent. situation like that. <laughs> okay, that uh, air dodge was really scary because that smash was right there. And you know, one of the benefits of being able to, um, one of the benefits of being Charizard, the fact that he is on that heavier end. Oh, and see, just like this, we get the instant switch because Smash feels kind of small. You don't need to worry about traversing. We saw the attempt of a hit into some sort of setup, and that being back air, nair, razor leaf. You know how it goes for Ivy. Yep, yep, yep. But if you don't get that, the main man's on the field already. Big lizard. Not a dragon. <laughs> Remember that. All right, try up being out of shield um, twice in a row. And but really, there's nothing Charizard can do about punishing that. Like, Fire sends Game & Watch so far high up so quickly. It's just such a safe option. Down B? Might have been a miss input. Yeah, it could be. Because right. in a reversal situation like that, Game & Watch could either go for, once again, up B, or maybe even go for five of the Chef. Oh, the cross-up with the fair? I'm surprised that I have not seen any um, fly out of shield yet. Well, that was that was the fly I saw. Yeah, and no. he's definitely going down from there. Like, he just hasn't really had an opportunity because Pins has been very good with you know, choosing his uh, times to go in. He's mostly letting Q do all the uh, the interacting and then just reversing on him. But Game & Watch does a good job of being able to shark. Is that it? Nope. <laughs> I love how when characters get buried, you hear trainers scream no. No. Like, get like he has a say in the matter. Forward tilt. Surprisingly in a close range, but it's still going to get the sweet spot, taking the second stock. Jab not yet. Nope. I'm surprised he was hesitant to strike out of shield against Game & Watch. Game & Watch, even though he himself has very good out of shield options, doesn't really strike on shield too well unless he's trying to get aggro for a grab with like forward air or back air or something. I believe it's the, um, the fact that the, um, the amount of frames that Game & Watch has minus against, I don't think he would really want to contest that. Because like, what if he shields? And what if he just runs away? Fly will not be able to hit him right, unless he's right. going aggressive. Yeah, back to square one on the... Yep, that's going to take it. <laughs> Whip out the key. Downer is going to manage to get game one for Krusty Ace Tim. Why doesn't Game & Watch work, Tim's? How or why? 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 Um, You know, all the Game & Watch games put Game & Watch in like very precarious jobs. Like yeah. Construction worker, he's been a scuba diver, he's been uh Wouldn't that be nice baker. to wear? Yeah, it's, Tim's are all-purpose. 
Look at that. We even got someone wearing Tim's right there. Who's that? That's Amaryllis rocking the Tim's. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get to the timing. Counterpick to Yoshi's story. I think it's a really good counterpick for uh, for Q. I feel like the fact that it's such a condensed triplat leaves a lot of opportunity for Charizard to squeak out a kill with minimal setup, and also gives a lot of leverage to fly as an out of shield option. You brought that up in game one, Darkson, and I feel like here it really has a chance to shine. Yeah, especially on um, the fact that um, the center platform is not here. We got more platforms for uh, Q to land on. Because whenever, um, in, back in Smash Bros, where Q had to land, he would mostly retreat to the platform, but that's already, like, hey time for Game & Watch. Right now, it's looking even right now. Once again, Q gets trying to, trying to find his opening. Like, look at this. He's just, like, circle strafing, trying to get Nairs out. He's just occupying so much space with his aerial. It's just big old buttons! But because he's staying mobile, like, Tim's doesn't have an opportunity to really like reverse on him because you can't just commit to to fire without something actually coming out of it. Get back there, that's definitely gonna take stage. it. No Yo, you just, yes, Tim's was like, excuse me? I thought my Tim's waited up in me a bit. <laughs> now you gotta get the metal toes for those. Back air? Oh no. That's a combo. Sometimes. If that was closer to the ledge, you might have been able to chase for uh, a very early kill. Hmm. I I'm starting to notice that, like, um, Hugh is actually just staying um, in the air. Game Watch doesn't really have a lot of aerials that kill other than down air and back air, but, like, those had to be, like, you either had to be above or literally right next to them or off stage. You know, Game & Watch has an excellent ground-to-air game. Definitely. But not so much the air to air. To air. A lot of Game & Watch's combos are kind of more two pieces. And if he doesn't get a chance to reset on the ground with either, with some form of shield pressure or to bait in an approach, he's not really bringing much to the table. Definitely the guy who comes to the barbecue and only brings plates. <laughs> Down air, yep, that's going to take it. Maybe if uh, Q stalled a little in his recovery, because um, Charizard does have um, two mid-air jumps. He would be able to um, maneuver around that. But definitely not, not in this dodge. Hope to see that in, in the mix-up. Excellent. All right. We're back on the Charizard. Minimal damage brought up, but Christian's Tim's isn't out of it just yet. The juggles with up airs have been phenomenal for him. Just try to deny that landing space. It's a great counterplay considering how Q is just trying to jump as much as he can. And, you know, the multiple jumps and whatnot. But also, do not sleep on that Nair. Nope. Like, if you don't know what's good with that Nair, you're like, you got you gotta learn. You're for a reawakening in that back air. What a great hitbox, man. It's just so far away. Right, we're trying to wall him out with back airs. Expecting the up air, it's gonna air dodge, but um, Krusty has 10 is not gonna cover the landing. Like the level of patience being uh, showcased by both players is very impressive because Q knows that he has to stay at like maximum tail distance, otherwise he's getting hit with up there. Yeah, we're, we're definitely waiting for one of them to commit, but like, who, how are we gonna know when no one is committing? Exactly, because Christian Sims doesn't want to deal with this. Look at that! Yeah, he's corner from far right, almost killing from the opposite side of the stage. Up throw. Yep, that's it. Very it. God damn. All right. I like the run from Q. Do not bother to interact. Yeah, Do no. not play games. All right, good oh. shield. That up tilt was definitely going to kill if he had that. I'm definitely trying to see the cheesy goodness from Charizard. <laughs> With max rage, low percentages, back air is actually vile, especially on a small stage like Story. Yeah, but based on how Q is playing, we're not going to. We're not probably going to see some um, raw flare blisses on, on neutral. That's definitely oh. going to take it. He could attack. Damn, all right, game three time. You heard the wall spike, you definitely could attack in that situation. All right, good stuff from Hugh. So yeah, for a heavy, a giant character, he's been playing it very well, he, according to patience. He's very aware of the fact that he's playing a character that could just get blown up at any moment and might not die, but will take damage, and more importantly, is gonna lose stage control out of it. Oh, coach. Oh. It's Coach? Arcadian! Oh! Senor Waff, currently, uh, whatever the hell he decides to play this week. Probably back on Wolf, I think. 
Uh, but formerly a trainer main, and definitely a trainer main at heart. Yeah, Trying to give some notes here to uh, let, let's see what's good. Hey, hey, look. Let's I'm going to just smile at you. Out of the Arcadian. Let's go. Yeah, let's go, man. Oh, oh, that's right. For those who aren't aware, Mr. 3000 is a trainer main of his own right. Mm -hmm. So you know where the bias sits. <laughs> Bro, use Charizard's crazy. <laughs> Yo, I saw you went to a tournament this week. Yeah. That's crazy. Right? That was crazy. Stream techs don't actually go to tournaments. I'm kind of schnice, though. Oh! You got the schmix. Oh! You got the schmix. All right, well, it's not Mr. 3000's place to be talking that good right now. But let's, see, but let's see who actually has the mix right here. So the pick in the battlefields, tri-plat tri -plat layout, but noticeably bigger than story. I think it's going to be a better fit for Krusty S. Tims as he tries to combat space. Um, if anything, the fact that it's a bit more wide is going to give him more room to escape any pressure that Hugh builds up and then try to be in an approach. Right, but right now you saw um, Hugh trying to go for that down air on when Game Watch was trying to recover. What a great back air, like I said before. But it's not going to get it. And now up smash out of shield. Game Watch is still in a bad position. He's going to do it for the jump. Nope. He's going to regularly get up and put himself back in center stage. I love the immediate adaptation we see from Q where he doesn't want to commit to jumping and covering space with Nair now because it's just not as good for being able to take that space away from Krusty S. Tins. He's waiting on the ground. He's trying to figure out where he's going to be able to space with forward tilt. And he's just maintaining the damage race so well. I'm really scared for Krusty Ooh. S. Tims. Every time that down air was about to come out, he was really close to landing the two frame. But that forward throw is going to take it instead. Good air dodge on the top platform. And sometimes that's really good to, to be aware of that option. Nope, not it. Yep, there to um, dash attack. That was kind of gross. But yeah, now we're seeing a little change of Hugh right now because last game he was very passive. Still seeing, we're, we're seeing that now, but he's finding his openings a lot more clearly. I feel like Krusty S. Tims is approaching a lot more. It's giving a lot more opportunity for Hugh to turn reversals in his own favor. And the fact that he is swinging with like just bigger buttons means he's going to have that greater of an impact. And it's looking like Krusty S. Tims is just feeling the burn as he's down to last stock. I'm loving the confidence from Hugh trying, going for these dares, knowing that like Krusty S. Tims is not punishing them. So I'm just going to keep going for it. And now we're going for the back throw. Yeah. Ah, he's trying to catch the positioning on the platform. All right, Charizard with max rage right now currently, and it's looking very scary right now for Krusty S. Sims because he could die to a back air right now. <laughs> oh, the setup. He's trying to go for the oh. setup. It's tipper forward tilt. Almost. Almost. Oh, this is so dangerous. All right. No stomps at the ledge today. Nope. Instead, it's just going to be the up smash read that's going to give Hugh... The win, a solid 2-1 for the solo Charizard. Yeah, this is great, great stuff from Hugh, putting in the work, covering the ledge, um, getting the punishes that he needs, and keeping the positioning into his advantage. All right. So yeah, good stuff. A very fun match to start our singles bracket, but right. the only one for us currently, we're going to have a quick change of the guard, so make sure to stay yep. tuned in, folks.